Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. In yesterday's video I showed you how to lower a car using Photoshop and in this video I'm going to teach you how to tint the windows of a car also using Photoshop. So let's get straight into it. I'll see you in Photoshop. All right so here we are in Photoshop once again and first thing I'm going to do is make a selection of the windows. Now you can usually you can have these all on one layer so what I'm saying is every single window can be one layer but what I like to do is separate each window on a separate layer because some may need to be darker than others so this rear windscreen also the rear screen here you can see is already pretty dark so I might not need it to be as dark as say these side windows here so if you make them all the same kind of darkness then some are going to be darker than others because in the photo some are darker than others so what we're going to do is select them individually so what i'm going to do first here is zoom in this photo is actually a little bit out of focus or there's been some movement but anyway and for this one i'm going to use the pen tool because we've got some curves to deal with as you can see around here and all of these even though they look straight there's little curves in them so let's grab the pen tool um if you don't know how to use the pen tool just look up some tutorials on youtube but this one's pretty easy to use um, for this in this scenario the pen tool's pretty easy to use so i'm going to show you how so we just start a selection somewhere like there and then let's just say we click somewhere up here you can see the line is straight but the window has a curve to it so we're going to pull our mouse while we're holding the left mouse button down still we're just going to pull our mouse around until that arc looks pretty good and then you can let go and continue with the next part and it looks uh, the curves a little bit weird there so i'm going to just whoops so i'm just going to move this by holding alt and dragging it just so it continues on that line. Sorry if I'm not being very clear, but like I said, there are better tutorials using the pen tool. So at this point, you can see that I've got the angle correct, but the this little wing on the edge here is, it's what it's meaning is that the line's gonna end up going off the frame of the window. So hold Alt or Option if you're using a Mac and just move that around till it's in line with where we wanna be next. So we're gonna go straight across here. And this one we're gonna try and do in hopefully one long streak. Now, the more careful you do this, the better. I'm not doing a great job, but I might just go here, actually. Um, sometimes, yeah, you can do the whole curve. Other times, you might have to do it in little steps. But I'm only going to do this first window, and then I'm going to speed up the rest. Um, and then, yeah, because it'll be a bit time-consuming to do all the windows in the video. Just like that. This should be, hopefully, pretty straight. Uh, there's a little bit of a curve there. That's probably okay. And you just go straight up there and then there's a little curve here. So yeah, I hope that was clear enough with the pencil. This isn't perfect at all. You can see there's parts where I've messed up here and things like that, but um, if you take your time and you'll do a better job than this. So we're gonna right click now and make selection. I like to feather it by one pixel, just makes the transition between the selection a little bit smoother. So press okay. And then what you wanna do is just click this square marquee tool here and then right click back here layer via copy now there is a quick way to do that there are some keyboard shortcuts but just to keep this simple that's the way i do it and then you'll see here now we've got layer one that's selected as that window i'm going to call that uh front window just so we know what layers we're working with now i'm going to speed up the rest of this and all the other windows and just a quick tip when you're masking the second window or the third window or the fourth, um, make sure you go back to your background layer before right clicking and pressing layer via copy. Otherwise it's gonna try and make a layer from the one that's selected. And there's obviously no data because if you remove these, all you've got is the front window. If you made your selection over here, there's obviously nothing there. So select the background layer before doing that and you'll be good to go. All right, so now we've got our windows selected, and if I turn off the background layer, you'll see them just floating there. Now, I've done a pretty bad job of uh, cutting them out with a pencil, so take your time, do a better job than me. I'm just rushing this for the sake of the tutorial. But um, what I'm gonna do now is just quickly show you what would happen if we were to, um, if you were to cut all the windows out on one layer, which you can do, I'll show you what will happen if we do that. So I'm just gonna group these all together, and I'm just gonna do this quickly. And then I'll show you how to do it properly. So I'm going to do an exposure. I'm going to go down. Don't stress, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing in a moment. But as you can see now, the back window kind of looks a lot darker than the side windows because um, there wasn't, there's was quite a bit of light on the back window. So the exposure is going to be a little bit different, especially if we go even darker. You can see the back window now is really, really dark and the side ones are like 
kind of what I'd go for, looking pretty good. But yeah, the back one's too dark. So this is why I like to do them separately. So let's delete this and we'll go back to what, actually let's undo and go back to what we had before. And I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do now. So with one of your window layers selected, let's just start with the front window, which is this one here. We're gonna go, just make sure that's normal. Uh, we're gonna click down here which is an adjustment layer and we're going to set this as an exposure adjustment layer now any of these four will do a similar job but i find exposure seems to do uh, the better job the cleaner job so let's click exposure now if you just start moving the exposure up and down it's going to affect the whole image so what we need to do is bind this adjustment layer to the window layer so holding down alt or option if you're using a mac um, if you put your mouse just in between the two layers, you'll see there's a little square with a down arrow. And what that means is it's going to bind the exposure adjustment here just to this one layer underneath it, which is the front window. So now what we can do is adjust just the darkness or brightness on that one window, as you can see. So let's just try and set what looks to be a nice tint. I reckon somewhere there's pretty good. Now, if we zoom in, you're probably going to see some yeah artifacts around here where I haven't traced the window very well, but yeah, just do a better job than me and it'll look a lot better than that. So I want to copy this layer. So what we're going to do is press Control or Command C and then Control or Command V. And now you can see we've got a second exposure layer. And once again, it's going to affect the whole image. So we just want to drag this above the next window we want to do, which is the rear side window. And again, holding down Alt, or option and going in between the layers we're going to do that that's just going to affect that window so now you can the reason i'm doing this is so now we can adjust each window individually so we might want this one a little bit brighter to match the front one a little bit better because i thought it was a little bit dark before same thing make sure the exposure layers layer is selected Control c or command c and then Control or command v and then drag this one above the next window and again alt or option in between the two layers press that that's done the little quarter window back here. That one should match this one anyway because they've both got similar light on them and we can always click back to them to see what the exposure setting was. So they're the same. And the front one we've left a bit darker so it matches. And then we're gonna do this one more time which will be for the uh, rear window. So Alt or Option, bind that together. So as you can see, the back window is really, really dark, but with this method that I've done, it allows us to pull the exposure back up a little bit on that rear window, just so everything matches a little bit better like that. And that's it. So it looks pretty good. Um, like I said, I've cut things out pretty poorly, so you can do a better job. You can see I've, actually these ones don't look too bad. You can see up here, I've missed a few spaces and the front one's probably the worst one I did. And, um, yeah, so yeah, the reason I do these separately is like I said, the light might be falling different on each window. If we tinted, tinted them all, then one window might be darker than the other and you can fix that, but it's just way easier to keep it all separate like this. So we've cut all our windows out separately and each window has its own little exposure layer. So we can see what it looked like before the tint just by doing that, oops. And then we can put the tint back on. And that's it. It's as easy as that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you followed along and I hope it was nice and easy to follow along with. So as I said in the video, it is a better idea to cut each window into an individual layer because there are going to be different brightnesses. And if you darken them all the same amount, they're all going to look different. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Pretty easy to do and makes the car look cool. So it's a good way to see what your car would look like with tinted windows or if you just want to make a car look better. Uh, using Photoshop. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks very much for watching.